In this video you will learn what are optimistic updates and how to implement them inside React without any libraries. And in order to understand the goal of optimistic updates, let's look on our example. As you can see here, I already prepared for us a React component, which is add to favorites. And as you can see, this is just a button with the counter of people who favorited something, for example, an article, and we can click on it in order to favor it. The main point is that this component is a part of a real project, which actually means when I'm clicking on this button, there will be a real API call to the backend, and it will update the information in the database. This is why when I'm clicking here, you can see that nothing happens for two seconds, and then we see here increased counter 11, and it is highlighted in green because now our current user liked this article. And the main problem is that huge delay. On your real project, it might be smaller, but there is delay anyway. Why is that? Because we are making an API call, and any API call takes time to be done. And here we are waiting for the response, and only when response is successful, we are updating our client. This is how we are doing it inside component. So we have add to favorites, and we are providing inside initial value, is our article favorited or not? and we have inside favorites count, which is our counter. Here we are preparing some classes to highlight our button, and we have here a handle-like function. This function is exactly what sends a request to our backend, and as you can see here, I put it inside with set timeout to seconds, so you really understand the problem. And after we got the correct response back, we are updating these two states inside React. And here on the bottom you can see our markup of this component. And again, this is not just some hello world component, this is a real component from real project, but I just added here a bigger set timeout so you can see the problem. And the problem is that we don't show a user immediate change after his interaction. He's clicking on the button and he doesn't see any change. Yes, it comes later when we're really sure that we're getting this data from the backend, but for user it feels like website is not working or it lags. And this is not how we typically implement things. How we can improve it? Either we can make our backend faster to respond faster, or we can use a thing which is called optimistic updates. It is not always possible to make API faster, but we can always leverage our client to make things feeling faster. What does optimistic update means? It means that we optimistically update our client, but we don't really know yet if our API call was successful or not. Which actually means in our case here, we can highlight this button as green and we can increase or decrease our counter depending on the logic even before we send this request to the backend. Because most probably this request will be successful, but user will see changes immediately. This is exactly optimistic update. We are optimistically thinking that our request will be successful and we can update our client so the user got immediate feedback. And it makes a lot of sense to do such stuff, for example when you are adding new items to the to-do list or you are liking something and so on. It all makes your client feel much much faster. I'm sorry for interruption, but I just want to let you know that I have a membership here on the channel that you can join to support me. It will give you access to the new videos earlier, emojis and priority replies to your comments. Now let's jump back into the video. And here we want to do that without any libraries. As you can see here, what we are doing in our request, we are providing is favorited property, but inversed. So if our article was liked, then we are inversing it to false, and we are doing exactly the same with favorites count. If it was favorited, then we are decreasing our counter. If it was not favorited, then we are increasing it. Which actually means here we can create two additional properties. For example, future is favorited, and it will be exactly this logic, is favorited false true, I will cut it out and put here, and we directly here can use future is favorited. And additionally we need new property, future favorites count, and we are copying this logic from our request. And here we can write future favorites count, which actually means even before we are doing that request, we know to which values we can update our data. After this we are passing them inside our patch, this is totally fine. But most importantly, we can do exactly the same logic like we have here, but before our request. I will copy it 
and put here. And what we want to do, we want to set our favorites count to our future favorites count. And exactly the same, we want to set is favorited to our future is favorited, which actually means we prepare our values, we update directly our local state inside React, so our client is already updated. And after this, we're doing this request to the API. And when we're getting the response, we're overriding values. Realistically, these values will be exactly the same, like they are already on the client, but it is always better to use backend data because they will be correct for sure. Let's check if it's working. I'm clicking here and as you can see, instantly we got a response. Our article is liked and we see here counter 11. I'm clicking again, we see counter 10 and it is immediately white, which actually means we got instant feedback because we leveraged here optimistic updates and we didn't even need any libraries for that. These are simply two lines of code where we're changing our state before making the request. And you might think, okay, this is all that you need, but actually it is not. We must also always cover a case when our API breaks. What will happen if we can't make this request? Let's try this out. What I want to do, here is my API and I want to stop it. Now here I want immediately and click on the item. As you can see here, we are getting 11 and our request failed, but we still see on the screen 11 and we liked the article. In this case, it means that we are lying to the user because we are showing invalid information. Realistically, our article was not liked because the API was not successful, but we already changed this logic with optimistic update. In order to fix this case, we must cover an error from our API. This is why after then, we can use catch, and inside, we don't really care what error we are getting, we want to revert our values to previous values, which actually means we must save them here. So when we're clicking on handle like, we want to save previous is favorited, and I'm assigning here is favorited, and here we have previous favorites count, and we're assigning here favorites count. So now we have two properties that we can reuse later, and we want to use them inside our catch. What we want to do, we want to set again our favorites count and is favorited to previous favorites count and here will be previous is favorited, which actually means if we have an error from the API, we revert all values to previous ones. In this case, user will see that something bad happened. And in the perfect world, you might also want to show a notification to the user that something is broken, like we got server error. Let's check again. I am clicking here and you can see we have 11. We are waiting for our response and now we don't see anything red inside console because we have catch and all our values were reverted to previous values because our API call is broken. And your React component sometimes can be really big and complex. This is why it makes a lot of sense to test them. And if you want to learn how to test React components correctly, make sure to check this video also.